Harborview Center in March of 1997. Prior to that, he owned and operated Metro Catering Company in Tampa, but Chef Terzak's experience reaches far outside the Tampa Bay area. He was executive chef at the American Stanhope Hotel on Fifth Avenue in New York and Gordon's, one of Chicago Magazine's top ten restaurants in the Windy City. He owned five restaurants in Chicago. Among them, Terzak's, Chameleon, Ketchup, and Tamales. He's also consulted for top-rated restaurants in Florida, Virginia, Chicago, and New York. Chef Terzak studied culinary arts at Dumas Père School of French Cooking in Glenview, Illinois, and was acknowledged by Food & Wine magazine as one of the top 60 chefs in America. For years, he hosted the cable TV series Great American Cookout, but now he's the host of What's Cooking, Harborview? Hi. Today we're going to do the little home entertaining thing. We have um, some beautiful canopies to make, three different flavors, and we're going to do that first. And then we have the tomato basil salad and the uh, sauteed grouper and mahi-mahi with cucumber dill relish. And we're going to do a little Sunday. We'll get all to that later. But uh, And if you miss anything, you can get the recipes at the end of the show. So I'm going to start you out by getting you warmed up with the canopies. Um, canopies are little pieces of food on toast. That's what they mean. Now, the way I make them is I cut the bread out in circles. Like that. And then I put them on a little pan and I toast them on the toaster on both sides. I mean underneath the broiler rather. I suppose you could put them in a toaster now that I think about it. Um, then, what I do is first we're going to make the shrimp, the shrimp canopy. I've got all the ingredients already made here. Now I've got some chopped shrimp. Throw that in the bowl. I've got some minced red pepper. I've got a little bit of minced celery. And I've got some chopped scallions. And you can substitute purple onions or something like that if you want. And I've got some mayonnaise, also known as la mayo. And um, a little bit of pepper. And some chopped dill we're going to chop up here. We'll save a little bit of that to garnish the top of this one. But normally when you make these canopies, you put the, uh, the mayonnaise on the bottom of the, uh, of the bread before you put the food on. But with this particular one, since there's, it's kind of like a mayonnaise salad, you don't have to do that. You can just put it directly on the bread. Now I have some pre-toasted bread here. And I'll show you how to do that. You just kind of form it on there. By the way, these aren't very expensive to make. And uh, let's face it, that's half the battle. Okay, there's your shrimp canopy. And I'll just put a little piece of shrimp on top of there. And a little sprig of dill, or a little slice of lemon, whichever you like. Boom, there's your shrimp. Now, we're gonna make one with a hard boiled egg with caviar and sour cream. Now that one we start out with a little bit of mayo. Put a little bit of mayo right in the middle of this particular one, like that. Then we slice us an egg. Put one slice of egg on top of there, like so. And we take just a little, little dollop of sour cream. Put that on there. And finally, a little bit of inexpensive caviar. I'm using gold whitefish caviar, but you can use black or red lump fish, and it's not as expensive as you think it is. You know, It'll probably cost you about 25 cents to make one of those caviar croutons. And then finally, a little vegetarian style canopy, which has mayo on it again, spread around. Then 
this, on this one, one, we'll put, put a little bit of broccoli, a little bit of artichoke bottom that I sliced up. And then a little bit of roasted red pepper or pimento, canned chopped pimento, which you can buy in the supermarket, of course. And then a little piece of olive. And I'm going to sprinkle this one with a little chopped parsley. And that's the vegetarian canopy. And then you just arrange all these on a little white napkin. And you have these sitting on your coffee table when your friends come over. And they are very pretty and colorful. Voila. Okay. Now, we're going to do that tomato basil salad. And be careful you don't cut your hand when you do that. There's a little guard here that keeps you from doing that. All right, here we go. First, we're going to slice up the tomato and take out the edge. Lay that tomato in there. This is a nice salad because you can make it ahead of time. And what's not to like, as they would say, you know, uh, everything in it is delicious. Uh, the ingredients are pretty, pretty cut and dry in terms of where to get them. Except for this one item, the fresh mozzarella in the milk or in the water. You can't buy that at every supermarket. Some specialty shops sell it like All Seasons on Fort Harrison um, and a few other places. So you might have to shop around for the fresh mozz. But you can substitute regular sliced low moisture mozzarella if you want to in this salad. Um, These tomatoes cut up. And of course, you can always make a sandwich out of this lettuce, lettuce and tomato and mozzarella with this beautiful bread. All right, here we go. Now, the roasted red peppers. That's something you need to take your red pepper, put it underneath your broiler, blacken it all the way around until it's completely seared. Then take it out and rinse underneath the water and it'll take all the skin off the pepper. Then you take the seeds out and slice it up any way you want. And that's what I did before we started today. Okay, and we got our tomato. Now, let's get some mozzarella going in here. Now this is cow's milk mozzarella. And it's all, that's the, 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 the most uh, that you need to spend is on cow's milk because there is buffalo milk mozzarella, which is the most expensive kind. But you don't really need it for the salad, although it's great if you've got it. We'll cut these up into little, little more bite-sized like pieces, and we'll lay the mozzarella in here. You'll notice I'm not trying to make this a perfectly looking salad, because by the time I get done with all these ingredients, it'll be perfect on its own. And let the food do the talking for me instead of the artwork. Okay. All right. Wipe up my mess here a little bit. Okay, and then we'll take some peppers. Cut them up. We'll put some of those in the metal there. Then we'll take and we'll slice up the Bermuda onion. Being careful, of course, not to cut our fingers. So nice. 
I don't think these are from Bermuda. I think somebody told us a big story one day. We all bought it. But anyway, they're delicious. Put our onions around there. Throw a few Kalamata olives on here. Then I take the beautiful fresh basil. Get rid of the stems. Just chop up the leaves now. Kind of crunch it up in a ball. It's a little bit easier to chop up. Put your basil all over the salad. And you get yourself a nice basil flower for the middle of the salad. Like that. And you take your, put your fresh pepper all over the salad, which is a little better than the pre-ground. I'd say a lot better. I should say a little better. Then, you hit it with the olive oil directly. Now you can add vinegar or squeeze lemon juice over this if you want, and but it's enjoyed just fine with plain olive oil on it. Well, it looks like a lot. Well, let's get some on there too. There you go. There you go. So that is a nice tomato basil salad. We're going to make the main course now, um, which is some beautiful black grouper and some mahi-mahi or dolphin, but nobody likes to call it dolphin, and some shrimp. Um, now, I clean the pin bones out of the black grouper with my little tool that I bought at the hardware store that has a spring in it, so it opens up every time you use it. You pull the bones out. It works perfectly. First thing we're going to do is we're going to season the fish with salt and pepper on both sides. Probably the... The most important thing in most of the cooking that we do is that you put the right amount of salt and pepper on the, on the product in the beginning. And some fresh pepper. Some people are fanatical about using white pepper because they don't want black spots, but I don't care. And I don't think you should either. Okay. We'll season it on both sides. Now we're, we're going we're gonna to cook the shrimp a little bit later. We're going to add it to the pan when the other fish is almost done because it takes such a short time to cook. Okay. Now we're going to just give this grouper a little slice. and kind of tend to like to cut it, cut it on an angle because it... Uh, well, it, look, it appears to be larger, for one thing. The other reason is it kind of aesthetically looks a little bit better on the plate. I'll just take the nice meaty pieces for this. And we're going to flour it. Now the shrimp you don't have to flour. Because it's going to kind of brown anyway. And you're using the flour because it, because it helps brown it. And makes a little crust on it. Doesn't mean you have to use the flour. You can cook this fish without the flour if you want. Okay, let's get this on here. And now we'll uh, get it into the hot saute pan before we make that cucumber relish. Okay, now we're going to do a combination of. Uh, uh, melted clarified butter, butter and, and olive oil. oil. The olive oil will cook a little better and the butter will help brown it a little bit. I'm going to do two pans here real quick. We're going to put the mahi-mahi in one pan. And we're going to put the grouper in another pan. 
you always want to put the side that you want to serve face up on the plate, face down first in the saute pan. Because that get, that's when it's the hottest and it'll get the most even brown and then your nice brown even part will be face up. Okay, now while that's sauteing, we're going to make that delicious cucumber relish now. Now, on that cucumber dill relish, which is nice and vegetarian-like too, uh, we're going to just mix it all in a bowl. I've got some diced cucumber here, peeled and seeded. I've got a little diced red pepper. I've got some diced celery. And I've got some chopped dill. Now, I'm going to show you how to peel, seed, and dice the cucumber real quick. Quicker the better, of course, huh? Okay. You take your seeds out of there. Like that. And you take your French knife and cut the cucumber this way first so that there's, the pieces aren't so big. And you cut it into strips. Turn it. Dice her up. Boom. There's your cucumber. Now, one little trick for dicing the onion that might be helpful is don't cut the onion all the way through to the end. You see I don't cut it all the way through to the end there? So it's still in one piece, you see? And you make yourself some incisions here by not going all the way through again either. And then boom, there you go. Instant diced onion. For this part here, I screwed up a little bit. I kind of like to keep that in, in line so I can dice it at the end. There you go. And add your diced onion to the cucumber relish. And you add your fresh black pepper. And your salt. I'm using kosher salt because, um, well, number one, it has no iodine, so it has no aftertaste. And the texture of the granules are nice because you can uh, you get more control over how much salt you're actually putting in there. Now I add the olive oil to the relish. We mix her all up and she's ready to go. We're going to flash this in the saute pan and put it over our finished fish and we're done. Okay. Now, it's time to add the shrimp and get the, uh, the other fish out. So let's do that real quick. This fish is nice and brown on the first side. So we're going to flip her over. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? And there's a trick here so you don't splash grease on yourself. And that is you, you tilt the grease away from you before you turn the fish. You see? There you go. Okay. Now you'll notice I was turning this fish with a pair of tongs. But once it's cooked, you take it out with a spatula because it's uh, a lot more tender. It'll fall apart. So you get this out. Get the grouper out of there first. And we'll get the shrimp added right into that pan. We'll get that sauteed. And we'll get the mahi, mahi out of there. And lay that on there. And we'll just pour this oil in here. I'll help cook the shrimp. And while all, while all that's working, we'll warm up some of the relish. And believe it or not, that shrimp is almost done already. Let's give it about one more minute. And while that's happening, we will take our little parsley potatoes, little potatoes that I boiled back here to help garnish. We'll dunk them in the butter. Butter, butter, butter. When in doubt, just add a lot more butter. Everybody will like it. All right, here you go. 
Those shrimp look like they've done enough for me. I'll take the shrimp. Lay them over there. How come nobody ever makes meat dinner like this? You know, it's, it's a problem. Okay. Now, we'll just take our relish, shut these off so we won't burn ourselves. We'll take our relish, just kind of all over the plate here. Of course, we don't want to completely bury the fish. Somebody might not know what we're having for dinner. All right, then we'll move this over, and we'll, I'll show you how to parsley the potatoes. Now, um, now you take your potatoes out of the butter, and you toss them into your chopped parsley. I just kind of, I blanch these in boiling water. And yeah, give them the big roll. There you go. And just put your potatoes all the way around. Then you've got kind of like meat, potato, and vegetable all together here with, with the relish. Boom. Well, that looks pretty good. Now, what I would recommend, I would recommend a nice Sauvignon Blanc with this, um, provided, of course, that it all makes sense. It definitely makes sense. Um, there you have it. Has this cooking program whet your appetite for learning how to cook like a pro? Join Chef John Terzak for cooking classes at the Harborview Center beginning in October. For more information, call the Harborview Center at 462-6778. Okay, now we got a nice hot pan here, and we're going to make an apple caramel sundae. We're going to start by putting a little butter in the pan and some sugar, and that's the basis for the caramel right there. Now these two are going to melt together for a second. Look at that, will you? And that starts to get nice and brown and bubbly, which ain't going to take very long. And we're going to add the apples, some nice sliced Granny Smith apples with the skin on. And needs a little touch more cream still. Now, we're going to hit it with a little cinnamon. There we go. Now, well, watch your face when you do this. Now, now we're going to throw some some raisins that are soaked in some dark rum on there. Now that, if that doesn't caramelize the sugar, nothing well, you know? That's what I say. We're going to mix that up and burn off that alcohol. And that'll finish caramelizing the sugar for you, see? This is beautiful. It's a beautiful thing. As I like to say about a finished product, it is, you know? There you go. There it is, there it is, there it is. Now that's caramel sauce, butter, sugar, heavy cream. Now, we're going to take this and we're going to ladle this over our vanilla ice cream. And there you're going to have an apple caramel sundae. Let's get that going here real quick. All right. Now we just scoop that nice hot caramel apple stuff all over there. This is not exactly the low-calorie dessert, but then again, who wants low-calorie desserts? Um, this is just, just right. This is great. Now, well, just for a little added touch, if you feel like it, you can throw a couple of cookies in there. 
a little, put a little mint leaf on there. If you really want to get fancy. And there you go. And that's what's cooking at Harborview. Thanks for tuning in. And the recipes are going to be shown now, and you can get the recipes on our website also. Thank you.